Hi, I'm Bill Mould, and I've given this little article the rather lofty title of the thermodynamic stability of bicycle wheels. Sounds like it might be kind of complex and mathematical, but it just involves a little bit of interesting geometry. I'm going to build a wheel, and I start with a nice round rim. For simplicity, we'll just make it a very simple wheel with four spokes. I calculate the length of the spokes that I need and lace up the wheel. Any tension that I put on the spokes are shown with the red arrows, the force of the spoke, which is pulling the rim inward, and that is opposed by a reaction force, which is in blue, trying to keep the rim from being compressed circumferentially. To make the graphics a little less cluttered, we'll just show the red arrows. I put tension T on the spokes, and the tension is about 1,000 newtons, which is also about 110 kilograms of force. The distance from the center of the wheel to the edge of the rim is 300 millimeters in each case. And if I had built the wheel with the requisite number of spokes, I would have a pretty good result. Let's do it again with an identical rim and identical spokes. In this case here, however, I have not put on consistent amounts of tension. I have way too much tension on the vertical axis and not nearly enough on the horizontal axis, and I have formed an ellipse. In the ellipse, in the vertical axis, the distance from the center of the wheel to the edge of the rim is 290 millimeters, and in the major axis, the distance from the center of the rim to the edge is 310 millimeters. So I have way too much tension on the spokes in the vertical axis, not enough on the horizontal axis, and we're going to come back to this in a minute as I seek to try to improve the stability of the wheel. On the left is a circle with semi-axis lengths, which are also the, the radii. The area is pi times a times b. Since a and b are the same in a circle, we have pi r squared for the area. In the case of the ellipse, we have essentially the same formula, a equals pi times a times b, when a and b are not the same. Now the perimeter of a circle, as anyone knows who took any basic geometry, the perimeter is just 2 pi times the radius. The perimeter of an ellipse, on the other hand, does not lend itself to a formula, and calculating it is somewhat of a horror story. Such as this. This is one of many approximations of a varying accuracy, and you can see that this would be very tedious to calculate. Fortunately, we don't have to do that because there are online calculators that will give us a very close approximation. By using that formula and assuming a great deal of accuracy of the spoke lengths, I get a perimeter for my ellipse of 1,885.48 millimeters. Calculating my area, I get 282,286 square millimeters. I think it's reasonable to assume that as I reshape my wheel from an ellipse into a circle, that the perimeter will remain the same. So that gives me a perimeter of 1,885.48 millimeters there also. But when I divide 1,885.48 millimeters by 2 pi r, I get the radius of the circle of 300.24 millimeters, more than the 300 I might have expected. And when I calculate the area, I get 283,052 square millimeters. One of the strange things about geometry, and you can check this out if you want to, if we have an ellipse and a circle of the same perimeter, the circle will always have a larger area than the ellipse. In the circle, if the area is greater and the spokes are somewhat longer, that has to mean that there is less potential energy bound up in the tension 
of the spokes in the circle than was the case in the ellipse. If we think of this as a system and its surroundings, it certainly appears that as we go from a less stable ellipse to a more stable circle, that some amount of energy in the form of heat is given up from the system to the surroundings. It's the same concept as soap bubbles. Those are always spherical because that is their most stable and lowest energy state. Now, admittedly, the uh, change of energy going from elliptical to round in a wheel is very, very small, probably insignificant. Uh, it isn't nothing, and it is intellectually interesting to find that the wheel is thermodynamically more stable when it is round than it is when it is anything other than round. Here is my contact information. Thanks for watching.